Hey everyone, well apparently ChatGPT is leaking passwords like it's a pirate ship made of Swiss cheese. Yeah, I was pretty proud of that one too. Somewhat related, Apple's Siri has also been sliding into OpenAI's DMs. We'll talk about all of that in just a minute. Plus, I've got a look at an infinite AI TV channel that you can tune into right now. Well, after you finish this video, at least. Also, a look at an Apple Vision Pro competitor, but five times cheaper and some very cool AR tech. Okay, let's dive in. So kicking off with not so great news for OpenAI, apparently ChatGPT has been leaking private conversations and logging credentials. It's not quite as bad as it sounds, but it's not good either. According to a report from Ars Technica, a ChatGPT user by the name of Chase Whiteside received a response which contained a conversation between ChatGPT and an employee of a company with whom Chase has no association. The conversation between ChatGPT and the employee seems to revolve around troubleshooting an app for a pharmacy services store that has a number of locations. It's redacted as to who it is, but I'm guessing it's the one that prints the really long receipts. Also redacted was obviously the name of the app, the store in which the problem occurred, and the logging credentials of the user who was having the issue. Interestingly, these results appeared after Chase prompted for a completely unrelated conversation. I went to make a query, in this case, help coming up with clever names for colors in a palette. And when I returned to access moments later, I noticed the additional conversations. They weren't there when I used ChatGPT just last night. I'm a pretty heavy user. No queries were made, they just appeared in my history and most certainly aren't from me. Interestingly, that was not the only conversation that appeared. A resume query also appeared, a research paper, and some PHP script also showed up. Color Harmonies is obviously the conversation Chase had alluded to, and uh, I presume lemon versus yuzu acidity is something that he was looking for as well. It's lemons, by the way. Lemons are more acidic. So yeah, I'll say that is not great. Although I will say this problem does not seem to be extremely widespread, and at least as of now is not exploitable but it also very clearly showcases the fact that you should always be careful with your own personal information and passwords. It also does validate the concerns a number of companies have raised, including Apple, who have an active policy restricting its employees from using ChatGPT. Well, kinda. Considering that sort of dovetails us nicely into our next story, namely that Siri has been low-key texting OpenAI. Apple is of course expected to Kool-Aid man its way into AI, with the release of iOS 18 in June with a major overhaul to Siri. So while that isn't necessarily news, some code splunkers at 9to5Mac were apparently able to dig into the beta of iOS 17.4 and did discover Siri Summarization, a private framework that makes calls to OpenAI's ChatGPT API. Examples of system prompts within Siri Summarize include, please summarize the given text, uh, please summarize, please answer this question. Now to note, it is highly unlikely that Siri 2.0 will be utilizing ChatGPT when it releases with iOS 18, but rather this is the Apple developers testing their model against ChatGPTs. So next time you're using ChatGPT, keep an eye out for some top secret Apple code. No one more thing here, that's the end of that story, although we do have some stuff on Apple Vision coming up in just a minute. In the meantime, I want my AI TV. AI Infinite TV has launched and you can watch it right here on YouTube. Created by Steve Mills and Max Einhorn, this is a 24 hour channel that is wholly generated by AI. Well, almost wholly. This is very much a step up from previous iterations on this concept, such as the all too brief existential comedy stylings of Nothing Forever, the infinite Seinfeld episodes. I don't know if you guys caught that while it was in its prime, but man, that was super surreal. It was like an episode of Seinfeld directed by David Lynch. You couldn't turn away. Now, unlike Nothing Forever, AI Infinite is actually not generating its content via an LLM, but rather with hundreds and hundreds of handcrafted prompts. Currently, AI Infinite is generating music videos 24 hours a day. So yeah, it really is AI MTV and it's utilizing Suno in order to generate that music. According to Steve Mills, the stream will be continually refreshed with new generations and remix, so no two viewing experiences will be the same. Future plans for AI Infinite include interviews and discussions, news and spotlight features. So as long as they stay away from AI reality TV, I think they should be fine, because let's face it, reality TV was the death of the real MTV. Next up, an Apple Vision Pro competitor at a fifth of the price. Uh, we'll see about that. 
Xreal recently showcased their Air 2 Ultra AR glasses, and they turned out to be a pretty big hit at CES. This device features 120 hertz refresh on dual OLED 1080p panels for each eye, and an increased 52 degree field of view. It has two front-facing 3D sensors, both for environment and for hand movement, and they plug in via USB-C to pretty much any device that you want to run them into. In an interview with Bloomberg, Xreal's CEO, Chi Zhu, stated about Apple, I think we're three to five years ahead of them in AR. They are catching up though, so we need to keep up and push the boundary. To that, Xreal have raised $300 million to the Ultra Air 2, uh, with an additional $60 million recently added. There's a good chance we can sell 50,000 units this year, Zhu said, stating that most consumers aren't interested in advanced features and a cheaper headset is definitely easier to sell. The Xreal Air 2 Ultra will retail at $699, and that is a pretty far cry from the Apple Vision Pro's $3,500. Now, I obviously have not used the Xreal 2 nor the Apple Vision Pro, but the general consensus is that this seems to be less a competitor and more of an alternative. There is obviously a lot of overlap in terms of features here, but I mean, the Apple Vision Pro is unquestionably the superior device. But again, we can't ignore that price difference and the fact that the Apple Vision Pro, you know, has that kind of ski goggle look. And a lot of reports are coming in that it kind of does start to weigh down on you after a while. Whereas I feel that the Xreal 2 and Meta's Ray-Ban glasses are probably all day wears without too much of an issue. So what do you guys think? Do you think AR and VR is finally taking flight this year? And if so, kind of which form factor do you like more, the Ray-Ban style glasses or the ski goggles of an Apple Vision Pro? Let me know in the comments. Speaking of which, here is some cool advancing AR technology coming out of Figment XR, who develop software for the MetaQuest and the HoloLens, amongst others. This is relighting, which basically casts shadows on 3D objects placed in an AR space. Um, yeah, that's really cool. Zoinks, right? The fact that this is all happening in real time is a really important step for, you know, creating essentially what feels like believable objects in an AR space. Uh, check this part out. This is really cool. Towards the end of this video, the orb gets pushed into the reflection. You can still, it's still tracking the 3D space even within the reflection. It's really cool. Relight is available now, so if you happen to have a Quest, a Magic Leap, or a HoloLens, uh, please give it a download and let us know what you think. Rounding out a quick uh, kind of correction from my last video in which I showcased Meshi, a text-to-3D generator. Apparently, while I was showcasing the text-to-3D features, I was actually using the alpha mode. There's actually a pull-down here where you can switch back and forth between the two. Beta does now seem to be the default, though. There is definitely a difference. This is the robotic cyberpunk ninja head that I generated in the alpha version, whereas this is that same prompt generated in the beta version. So there's definitely a pretty significant jump in terms of aesthetics, style, and quality. To be honest, I did think that the alpha versions were pretty good. Here was our cute baby dragon, but the beta version obviously is a lot better. And I think this, again, it's a cliche, but it does go to show how quickly things are moving. So if you run across a tool that you think is pretty cool, just wait a couple of months because it's about to get a lot better. If you're interested in checking out that video on Meshi, it is coming up right now. It is also linked down below. On that note, I do thank you for watching. My name is Tim.